Hello survivors and welcome to another Walking Dead Road to Survival video. In this video, we're going to be taking a first look at yet another Telltale character coming to the game, which I'm always happy when I see Telltale characters coming to the game. It is going to be Marlon and Rosie, the duo again. We have had a Marlon and Rosie duo before. Last time around, it was a very good fast character, very heavy damage and a lot of AP gain based on the weapon. You could get rushes off very quickly. A bit RNG based, but the, the devastation that he could cause was pretty intense. You could also have him on some very quick teams because of the AP gain weapons, the 8% weapons, and you could get those rushes off very, very early. This time around, Marlon and Rosie is going to be a strong character, however, so it's still a melee character. In terms of the visuals, carrying the fish home back to Ericsson, I guess that's potentially what Marlon and Rosie did for Ericsson, you know, went fish hunting, that sort of thing, but we never we never knew, we never knew. We'll check out the stats, however, 4,727 attack, 3,526 defense, and 4,188 HP, so balanced, obviously, towards the attack stat. You kind of would expect that if it was going to play into the same sort of model that the, the first Marlon and Rosie played into, which was just a damage dealer. Trait is strong, and then, you know, like I say, roll is damage. Not the highest amount of damage stat. I think other characters do have more. However, he does have around about 200 to 250 more attack than Arav. So definitely a decent damage dealer on the face of it of base stats. Now we'll check out his rush first. It's called Unrelenting Maul. It's got a 66 AP cost. So very, very quick. Exactly like we saw from the previous Modern Rosie. So could be utilized in one of those AP gain teams to try and get his rusher off early. Wouldn't be too much of a problem. Deal 300% damage to one enemy. This character recovers from all penalties and regains 50% of their max HP. Now, two obviously two parts to this one again. The first part is kind of underwhelming for a damage dealer, on, just straight up on the rush. It's going to rely heavily on buffs to really make this do any sort of damage. And it's only to one character. I think if this was a line damage, it wouldn't be too bad. It would still be less powerful than Arabs, who's like 700% or something. I can't remember his percentage is really high. It's also lower than Angel, who is a support character who has 400%, and this is to single target. Generally speaking, single target damage is huge, and this is very, very, very low. But there could be other parts of his kit that could play into this. I know there are other parts of this kit that play into this. So on the face of it, the rush is, seems underwhelming with the 300%, but it does get better when we go on. Now, the second half of his rush, just straight up on the rush, is very strong. It's kind of like a, a, I don't know what you want, a bargain value Zachary, where Zachary would recover all penalties from all teammates. Now, Marlon Rosie just recovers all penalties on himself and regains 50% of his own HP, whereas, you know, Zachary would do 100%. So, not as powerful, not, not as overpowered. Obviously, a full team cleanse was just absolutely insane. This is a single target, just himself, full cleanse, which is very strong still. Obviously, has the... The, the, the counters with trauma, so he can get devastated by that. If you have teams where you just pile on debuffs, he'll absolutely destroy himself if he's got a big amount of trauma on him. But that second half, you generally want to see on a, a tanky character. And the 50% heal, like I said, you kind of want to see on a tanky character. Fortunately, his second highest stat is HP, so that's quite a decent boost regardless. When he's maxed out, that's going to be like 2,100 heal, just when he does his rush. That's actually pretty decent every single time he rushes. Now his active skill here is what plays into boosting that rush up and I don't mind this too much, it is attack up and AP gain, initial cooldown of 2, cooldown of 2 and number of uses 20 so very quick to use, you can use it very often and use it a lot, you know, you've got a couple of characters like this, we've got Mercer, um, I'm not really sure who else, there are, there's a, maybe, is it Pete, I think Pete can also hit his active skill a lot like 20 times in a battle so we've got another character like that in marlon and rosie this character gets 150 percent attack for two turns and gains 35 percent ap now the 150 percent attack straight away makes that rush go from 300 percent to 750 percent damage like instantly makes that a, a nuke that but it's still only single target but it does make that rush instantly better obviously a lot better than it was before and you're going to be able to get that off. That's an initial corner on F2. The, the third turn you can rush. He will need a little bit of AP gain from attack teams. He will need like an 8% weapon or a command because he'll just be under the 66 AP otherwise because the 35% is not enough for an attack team. However, 
It is plenty for a defense team and he'll easily have his rush on a defense team by doing this. So, so far with the second half of his rush giving him quite, you know, tanky roll in terms of full cleanse and a heal and the, the AP just being a, just a bit too low on the attack team. It seems like they're gearing him more towards a defense team than an attack team character, even as a damage dealer, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. You can still use him on an attack team, but it isn't necessarily a bad team that he seems to be pushed more towards defense than attack. You can have more offensive defense team characters and that's where Marlon Rosie seems to be going at the moment. Now he has got a specialist skill which we haven't seen too many times in the game. I think it's like twice. I think there's a, there's definitely a Eugene. Everyone knows who the Eugene is. Eugene was a very good character. I remember actually utilizing Eugene's specialist skill. He was in like a one on three against three Andreas and they all rushed him but they all died because when you get rushed as a lightning reflexes character you get off an attack. You just do a, a basically a counter attack immediately before they rush and that procs your weapons, that procs everything. So if you notice, Monon and Rosie is a strong character. So if you were to put a stun weapon in his hands, you could stun a character before they rush you, which is immensely strong because it could potentially drain their AP as well. Like it could use their entire AP then stun them. It really depends on the sequence of, you know, how it, it, it does things. If it's like, okay, I'm doing my rush, I get stunned, I didn't do my rush, I'm stunned. Or it could be, I'm doing my rush, drain the AP, then I get attacked and then get stunned. So potentially, if you put a stun on attack weapon on this character, could be really good against some characters who would want to rush him. Now he has got a base weapon and it is Rosie. It is 30% attack. A medium bonus to AP when attacking and it has got an off trait special a very good one as well when attacking a better chance to make a second attack with 200% now I would say this weapon as a base weapon is really good for an attack team and if you did want to use them on a defense team you'd want to max this out make it perfect 40% attack huge on attack make it a five star weapon and then put a stun weapon in his hands and then you could potentially, like I said, with lightning re reflexes, you'd stun characters as they try to rush you. You could make him very tanky. You could get his attack boost from his active skill. He would be getting enough AP to still do his active and his rush without having sort of to attack again. I don't think this character's too bad on a defense team. And when I've come up against Lao Po, for instance, they haven't had too much of in the way of danger characters. They haven't had any characters where I'm like, this character could wreck me. And Marlon and Rosie seems like the sort of character that could be it. You can't really rush him very easily or you run that risk of being stunned. I mean, he's, he's going to be annoying, that's for sure. You can obviously disarm him so he wouldn't stun you if you did rush him. But he's still going to do damage when you do that. Regardless, he'll still hit you reasonably hard. So all around, I don't think Marlon Rosie is terrible. I think a lot of people will just focus on the 300% damage to one target and think that makes the character terrible. But I think if you build him properly... You can, like I said, you're going to boost that 300% to 750% instantly just based on his active skill. Then with extra attack on the combat mods, don't forget the weapon boost. And then you could potentially get the 80% attack versus stun targets. He could do huge amounts of damage. Let's be honest, he can do huge amounts of damage. The main downside of his damage is it is to single target. But on defense teams, that can sometimes be quite beneficial. If you're running teams, like I said, with Lao Po, and then let's say you've got Deyu with Crosshairs, he could just be decapping characters at will. So in the end, I think Marlon Rosie is a character that can work both on attack and defense. The only issue I think he's gonna have on defense teams is not many people would have gone for Lao Po just because of the amount of characters that could be used with her. When you see Pete, there were just so many characters around that could be used with Pete at the same time. There are a lot of ranged characters in the game, basically. So I think mainly people have gone with Pete and may have left Lao Po by the wayside. Like for me personally, I think I'm like halfway to a second five star and I haven't focused her too much at all. That's just from like random rewards random crates, territories, that sort of thing. So that's the only downside I can see really with Marlon and Rosie. But as he's part of an event and you can just get his cards just from going in on the event, it's definitely worth just trying to pick him up. Having an extra character on your roster, there's definitely no downside to that. And who knows what happens in the future? You could get Lao Po, there could be a new leader that comes out. And he, like I said, he's not that actually that bad on an attack team 
He will just require a little bit more configuration versus him being on a defense team and the kind of things he could do on a defense team, which could be quite fun, like I say. This, I, I kind of want to see the lightning reflexes stun combo just in action. And then obviously he can have the healing stun too. So if you rush him, he could potentially just stun you and heal himself. That, that just, just this seems like the biggest ever troll. Like I'm going to rush Maron Rosie and he just, he comes out on top and, and somehow has more health. How does that, <laughs> it's like, okay then, okay. Um, but yeah, so another Telltale character in the game. I'm happy enough with that. Do tell me what you think about Marlon and Rosie. What do you think they could have done to improve this character? Do you like the way they built him? He is very different to every other character we've got. So I kind of like that. That is the end of my video though, guys. Thank you very much for tuning in. And as always, keep on surviving, guys. Keep on surviving.